subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. I have with me today the ambassador of Afghanistan to India, Ambassador Farid Mamunze. He is going to talk to us about the current situation there that is there in Afghanistan and the things that are developing. Welcome to the Print Ambassador. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Basu. Um, so, Ambassador, as you can understand, I mean, there are so many developments that are happening uh, at one point of time when the peace deal was signed between the U.S. and the Taliban. Uh, we were all looking forward to the fact that the intra-Afghan dialogue will start. Uh, however, things have really changed in a different way. Uh, but to come to the point that uh, it seems that right now India has also started uh, talking to the Taliban, although India officially is still uh, c- very much following the policy that in any, any dialogue will be Afghan-led and Afghan-owned. However, we've heard the Qatari special envoy talking about the fact that Indian officials made a quiet visit to Doha where they could meet some of the Taliban leaders. Do you think that is something that is required now? Um, what, what, in your perspective, what is the situation, and do you think, uh, what do you think that India's role should be in this? Well, thank you very much. Uh, you raised very important points. Uh, we went to Qatar last year in September, uh, and we went with good faith, uh, considering the suffering of the Afghan people of the past forty years hoping that we would reach a meaningful conclusion with the Taliban. Uh, Sadly, that hasn't turned out to be the case. Uh, There were new conditions, new proposals, and that delayed the whole process. They were delaying tactics on on their part, and as a result, the whole peace process was jeopardized. Uh, Now, as we go into the future, we we hope that... uh, Uh, Our requests, the requests of the Afghan people in the Afghan Republic would be honored by the Taliban to sit in a meaningful dialogue and put it into the bloodshed. You may have noticed that there is an increased level of violence across the country in the recent months. Uh, And there are also verified reports that the Taliban have not cut ties with international terrorist organizations. Uh, which is something of great concerns to the Afghan public, uh, the Afghan government, the region, and, and the broader world. Now, in terms of uh, India's uh, outreach to, to Taliban or uh, the apparent uh, uh, rumors of Indian officials meeting the Taliban is something that has been uh, there, and, and we, the Afghan government, can't verify that. Uh, we welcome uh, India's uh, productive role in the peace process so far. India has been a very principled uh, and and a strategic partner and very principled partner in the peace process. Um, India consistently supported Afghan-led and Afghan-owned process uh, and and we appreciate India's support all the way uh, through these difficult processes. Uh, Now we we would welcome India's messages to Taliban uh, to cut ties with regional terrorist groups, to let violence go, and uh, to tell the Taliban to preserve the gain of the past 20 years and believe in constitutional democratic uh, framework, something that we had developed in the past two decades, uh, for which we are proud of, um, giving every uh, uh, sect of our society uh, role in space, particularly focusing on women representation uh, in, in the government and parliament and civil society, education and media. And, and those are something that Afghan people would not want to reverse back. Uh, so we, we would want India's uh, uh, strong messages to those Taliban elements, those Taliban who are reconcilable, who, who believe in the reintegration process back into the Afghan society and hopefully becoming part of the mainstream political life. So you believe that India should speak with those uh, Taliban leaders who believe in the reconciliation process, who believe in having a dialogue. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Taliban is, uh, 
is part of the Afghan society. We can't overrule that. But those Taliban who believe uh, in the Afghan society, who believe in the Afghan way of, of life, um, those Taliban are Taliban who are reconcilable, who can come back and integrate back to the society, give something back to the society in, in various ways and forms. So, so who are those? Uh, um, who are those? Are they really talking to you? Uh, can you name some of them? Who are those that you think India should talk to? There, there are among, among the senior leaders, there are many people who, uh, who want to talk to uh, the Afghan people, who want to become part of the mainstream political uh, and social life in Afghanistan. Uh, it's difficult uh, for me to name a few individuals, uh, but we certainly know of people who, uh, who believe uh, in the progress of Afghan society uh, as opposed to uh, where the Taliban had left them 20, 21 years ago. So there are certainly uh, a number of people, a good number of those people are there uh, who want to uh, integrate back to the Afghan society. Uh, and Basuji, let me tell you also another fact that uh, since the international forces are withdrawing from Afghanistan, since there is going to be no US or NATO presence, mili military presence in Afghanistan, there is no uh, uh, justification for the jihad or holy war against Afghans, against Afghan National Army, Afghan security forces. Uh, it's time for them to put an end to the bloodshed. It's time for them to put violence aside and adopt a peaceful way of, of living together in coexistence with, with all Afghans in peace and harmony. Mm -hmm. So, um as you said, that the, that the violence level has really uh, gone very high in the last uh, couple of months, <clears throat> especially from May, excuse me. So, and we've seen uh, now that President Ghani and your peace and reconciliation leader, uh, Mr. Abdullah Abdullah, they're also now, right now, uh, I mean, they're in US. Uh, so, and their visit is uh, going to be over soon. Do you think that this matter is going to be raised very prominently that, uh, that, the, that the violence level has really gone high and also some of the cities in northern Afghanistan have fallen to uh, the Taliban? I mean, there are even reports coming uh, in some of the international media that even Kabul can fall to Taliban. What do you have to say to that? Well, first, uh, the war uh, in Afghanistan is not a war between Afghans. We are not going through a civil war um, where an Afghan is fighting another Afghan. We are fighting global terrorism. There are 20 plus terrorist organizations uh, with aim to target the West, the region, uh, and places outside Afghanistan. So the Afghan uh, National Defense and Security Forces are fighting on behalf of the region. They are fighting on behalf of the international community. The level of violence has intensified in recent months because there is uh, a belief uh, on part of Taliban that they can militarily take over Afghanistan, uh, a wrong belief that we rule it out completely. Now, the visit of our president and, and Dr. Abdullah is exactly for the very purpose to uh, open and initiate a new chapter of partnership with the United States uh, and uh, other countries as we go into the future, other European and, and NATO member states, we would require international support for the foreseeable future. Uh, as I said, this is an international war. This requires an international effort uh, with more resources for the Afghan security forces for the next five to 10 years. Uh, a, number of, uh, uh, a number of districts have fallen into Taliban hands. Uh, and in the, in the past five days, we had also taken back uh, a number of districts from the Taliban. So it's, it's a war uh, in a number of those provinces, in a number of those uh, districts. We don't believe that Afghanistan would be taken over by Taliban in six or 12 months. We, we don't think 
that those reports present the accurate strength of and credibility and resilience of the Afghan security forces and the resilience of the Afghan public. Uh, we, we don't think that that would be the case in, in six or 12 months' time. No province, no provincial capital has been taken by Taliban uh, in the past uh, three, six or 12 months. Uh, so there are, given the fact that there are 34 provinces, no provincial capital has been taken by them. Uh, all strategic districts, all strategic provinces, all strategic uh, locations of the country where we have big population, where, they are, where those places are economically important to us, and where there are national infrastructure, national highway, are protected by the Afghan security forces. There is an intense fight in various parts, uh, but our security forces are capable enough to secure and keep our people in the country safe. Uh, now, lastly, this is, uh, this is something that may continue uh, in, in the months ahead. Uh, and, and we hope uh, that Taliban would realize that it is senseless to continue this useless violence against their own people. And the sooner they put an end to it, the better it may be for them and for the Afghan people and the Af Afghan public. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, now let me ask you, there are also chances and we get to hear it, it from many experts and analysts that in all probability, the US might delay its exit uh, or it can also uh, keep the Bagram air base. Now, in a situation like that, so that, you know, um, they can do some emergency evacuation and things like that. Do you also feel that they might, looking at the level of violence and the fact that the intra-Afghan dialogue is uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state where it is uh, not really moving the way one had expected, do you think that the U.S. might uh, look at a delay beyond September 11? Uh, well, first, uh, um, just to be on the record, we had taken uh, security responsibility of Afghanistan since 2014. 98% uh, of the security operation had been conducted by our own security forces. There has been very limited American or NATO support. And there has been, there was a time when we had over 140,000 international forces in Afghanistan. And today there is a time when we have less than 10,000 forces. So we have grown, the Afghan security forces have grown in, in size and, and uh, uh, capability. Uh, now, if they withdraw on 4th of, if they complete their withdrawal on the 4th of July or in September, or delay it for some time, uh, that is not going to change our responsibility. Uh, our responsibility to the Afghan people and the Afghan Republic would remain there. Now, they, the U.S. provided us with great technical and logistic support. The logistic support is something that we acquire, uh, we would require from them for, for a number of years uh, until we find so resources uh, sufficient enough for, to, to finance the operation of all security forces. Now, the level, the level of violence, uh, given that uh, it increased, uh, um, uh, international prisons would certainly help um, uh, um, monitor uh, and continue the required uh, humanitarian assistance needed for various parts of the country. So the presence of international forces uh, for logistical humanitarian purposes is, is good. But in terms of the fight, uh, there has been very little support in the past six to seven years where we had conducted most of the, major, the majority of, of military operations ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, now coming to the role and, and the kind of uh, statements we are hearing from Pakistan. The Pakistan foreign minister the other day stated very clearly and, and, he, and he keeps on saying that uh, even the Prime Minister Imran Khan, that, that the Afghan government need to engage. They need to tell us what role they want Pakistan to play. Is that, the, is that the right statement? Do you really need to define the role that they need to play? Uh, what is it going on? Um, I think uh, there has been um, several 
high level uh, exchanges of visits to Kabul and Islamabad in, uh, in the recent past. Um, Prime Minister Imran Khan visited Kabul. Um, the Chief of Armed Forces of Pakistan visited Kabul. Uh, and, and we reciprocated a number of senior officials' visits uh, in the recent past as well. Uh, I think uh, we know, uh, and also the Pakistani know this for sure too, that what is there that the Afghan government want them from? We want uh, uh, a sincere effort on their part to use the influence they have over Taliban to come to the negotiating table with the required will for peace, put an end to the killing of uh, Afghan civilians and let violence go. Uh, they have an incredible influence over Quetta Shora, uh, over uh, uh, several Taliban leaders and using and utilizing that influence is something that we have been requesting Pakistan to support us with. Okay. Now, coming to India's role, and since you are, uh, you know, Afghanistan's ambassador to India, once the exit happens, and if it really happens by September 11 and all NATO troops leave, what is the role that you want India to play uh, keeping in mind the fact that, you know, even by September, there may not be a headway in the intra-Afghan dialogue. So we are already hearing some of the uh, action plan that, you know, uh, countries like Turkey and others are coming up with. Uh, what is it, what security role uh, particularly you want India to play once the exit takes place? Uh, India has been assisting Afghanistan continuously for the past 20 years. India has been the fifth largest contributor to our development and the largest uh, aid provider to Afghanistan in the region. We would want India to continue the constructive engagement uh, that has been there in the past two decades. Uh, we have closer to 20,000 Afghan students studying in India. Uh, India has played a very productive role in our reconstruction and redevelopment and, and we would want India to continue assisting Afghanistan for as long as it is required. Now, in terms of uh, security, we have a strategic partnership agreement with India. Uh, the only two SAR countries that have such a partnership. We expect India to continue supporting our security, defense, uh, organizations by providing us the required technical assistance to train our officers, uh, where India has been very generous by training, by providing us the opportunities to train Afghan candidates in some of its finest military academies. Uh, we, we seek that assistance in, uh, in the years to come as we develop our security forces. Uh, secondly, uh, medical assistance to uh, to our injured uh, uh, officers in the field is something where India has been providing us assistance and we would want to continue uh, uh, India's support uh, to, to those officers as well. Uh, and thirdly, uh, other engagement in other areas, military to military cooperation, where possible, where we need India's support. Uh, India has been kind enough to, to gift us uh, helicopters, uh, in the past, which, has, uh, which have been uh, instrumental uh, in providing us the logistic and, and battle support. Uh, so these are some of the, the, the initiatives that India uh, can undertake and continue with uh, some of those under, already undertaken initiatives. But do you want, uh, and that's something that we keep hearing for last, about a decade now since the strategic partnership, uh, you know, the agreement that was sign signed is that India should put uh, boots on the ground. We've heard, uh, you know, this happening, this request coming up, uh, but Indian government has not been, um, you know, doing that. They, they say that, as you rightly said, that we provide training. But do you know, do you, do you think that there could be a situation where India might have to do that? Or have you having, are you having those kind of a dialogue with the government? No, there hasn't been 
any such discussion uh, and we have never asked for uh, India's engagement in Afghanistan um, at that level. Uh, there is sufficient human resources in Afghanistan uh, which supports um, the ranks of army, police and intelligence units. Uh, what we require, as I said, uh, is logistic, financial and, and human resources assistance. Uh, no, the, determination, the determination and the will of the Afghan people to serve uh, security ranks uh, is higher uh, now than ever before. Uh, they're willing to defend their country. The resilience, the determination is there. Uh, I think we are not in a position where uh, we would see uh, the support of, of, uh, of India to have Indian soldiers in Afghanistan. That's something that, uh, that has not been discussed. As far as I know, there hasn't been such discussions. Okay. Ambassador, my last question to you now will be going forward uh, from, let's say, the beginning of July till September 11. A lot is going to happen. Um, maybe the U.S. will make a complete exit. But in the next uh, one year or two years, do you really think there are chances that, that you know, a, a probable uh, Taliban takeover can happen? Because that is what are the danger signs that we are, we are hearing, reports are coming up. What is your uh, viewpoint on that? I think that's uh, that's far from uh, from a real that's, uh, far from being a realistic assessment of the situation, since the U.S. forces and NATO forces are not all across the country in Afghanistan, uh, and it's it's you know the assessment is uh, is is not based on on the parameters that we the Afghan security forces. Uh, would ideally want uh, to have based on. Uh, I don't think we would be in a situation in, in six or 12 months time where uh, Kabul or Afghanistan would fall into the hands of Taliban. Uh, I don't think it's, it's a realistic assessment of the ground situation. Uh, like I said earlier, there hasn't been a single provincial capital out of 34 provinces which has been taken over by, by Taliban. So if we could um, keep 34 provincial capitals secure for the past six to seven years, we would fight for the secure security of all 34 prov provincial capitals in the coming 12 months and even beyond that. It's our country, it's our responsibility. We are paying a huge price for it and we are, we are willing to continue paying that price for as long as it is required. Sure. Ambassador Mamunze, thank you so much for talking to the print. Please take care. Thank you very much, Basuji. Thank you for having me.